Afternoon. Now today we're going to give politics a miss, as it can just all be a little bit repetitive. We know what the Dindus are doing, so we don't need to remind ourselves constantly. Instead, we're going to cheer ourselves up by looking at five mysterious incidents that as of today remain unsolved. The world is full of mysteries, such as how did Nick Lowell's get a wife? What happened to Tommy's bus? And why was there a press release for Madeleine McCann's disappearance released on the 1st of May, when apparently she didn't go missing until the 3rd? I think we'll never get answers to these ones. So I've instructed the kitten to get online and find some of the best. Let's see how he's getting on. Ah, hard at work I see. You just can't get the staff these days. Charleston, New South Wales, lived 16 year old Godana Gadevsky. Yep, who one evening set off down the road to her aunt's house. Because it's the middle of nowhere Australia, she only passed about six houses and lots of trees on the way there. She was followed by a pickup truck which according to eyewitnesses stopped and a man jumped out and dragged her into the vehicle. She wasn't seen again. The witnesses were put under hypnosis to get a more accurate description of those involved, which resulted in these photos. All of the owners of the same model van were questioned in the area and searched, but there was no trace found. Why did the six witnesses just watch and not do anything is also very strange. So, what happened to her? It has been said she might also be a victim of the same person responsible for four other disappearances in the same region. However, two weeks before, she told her sister of a young man who kept coming to her workplace and harassing her, so much so, she left. Here's a photo fit of him which won't shock you at all. There is a million dollar reward for anyone that can put an end to this case. Not from me though, the Aussie police. Trevor Dearly was a fellow who lived in Dublin back when it was safer than it is now. Only in December 2000, he went to a Christmas party and afterwards went into town with some friends to carry on getting drunk. At 3.30am he left to go home and as there was a taxi strike, had to find another way to get home as it was starting to rain. He decided to nip into his office and get an umbrella. CCTV showed that for half an hour before Trevor got to his office, a mystery man was waiting outside the office door. We then see Trevor walk past and the man starts to follow him. Trevor unlocks the gate whilst chatting to the mystery man and goes in. Half an hour later he leaves and CCTV shows him walking home, but behind following is the mystery man again. Trevor wasn't seen ever since, and a large operation was undertaken to try and find him, but until now there hasn't been anything. So, was the mystery man responsible, or was it something else? There is a 1000 euro reward if anyone knows. Not from me though, from the police in Dublin. This is 19 year old Maria Glikina from Russia who lived in Nizhny Novgorod and was a fan of photography, art and probably Putin. In November 2014 she went out to meet her friend and at 10pm they had a chat on the phone as Maria was walking to her mate Irina's house. 20 minutes later she called her friend again to say she was about 3 kilometers away and to get the vodka ready. She then got a text a bit later saying she was 10 minutes away. After 20 minutes, Irina called Maria to see where she was. Maria answered but she was out of breath and said, Sorry, I can't talk right now, 
I'll call you later, and then hung up. Given this was quite weird, Irina called her back and Maria said, I'm not coming, and hung up again, and then the phone was switched off. She wasn't ever heard from again. 77 volunteers from the community went on the hunt for her the next day, and unfortunately she was found bound in an abandoned house, which are quite common in Russia. The police said initially that she had been hit by a driver and dumped, so they get away with not reporting it. But given that the pathologist found that she had been beaten and raped, it didn't make sense that she had just been hit by a car. The CCTV showed her walking in a different direction to her friend's house. Closely followed by this bald fella. It was 300 metres away that she was found in the house. The phone records show that she was bundled into a car as her movements were too quick for someone walking or running. CCTV captured the same man the following morning, probably after he did the deed. To this date, it has still not been solved and he has still not been found. In 1991, in New Mexico, a man stereotypically named Eduardo checked into a motel alone for one night. However, Two days later, the staff realised he hadn't left. Because there was no spare key, they ignored the do not disturb sign on the door and let themselves in. They found a suitcase full of women's clothes, a picture and some drug weighing scales. But where was Eduardo? Well, he wasn't there and hasn't been found since. But what they found in the bathroom was the woman in the picture. Hanging from the shower and she was full of heroin. To this day, the woman has never been identified and the man's family were contacted using the details he left and were told actually, that's not Eduardo at all and he's died. So, who were this pair and what happened to either of them? As Americans were probably drifting off to sleep in front of their TVs after watching the Golden Girls, the channel ended as it usually did with the national anthem playing before cutting to the colour bars. Unlucky Yanks, no puppet with a chalkboard for you lot. However, one evening, in 1989, something else came up instead. This freaky looking missing poster came up and stayed there for a few hours. No one spoke over it and beyond what you see here, nothing else was shown. It's fair to say that if you woke up half asleep with the TV on and saw that, you'd not be going back to sleep for a while. But who was Joanna Lopez? Well, no one knows, as despite people looking into it for the last 33 odd years, there is no record of her and the TV company said it was given to them by an anonymous person to be shown, and that was the last of it. But then, in 1991, same time of night as people were dozing off after eating their extra large McDonald's, it happened again. But this time, for only 10 seconds, but it was a bit clearer. So, what's the answer? Was it a prank by someone at the TV station? Was she a genuine missing person who was quickly found? Who knows? I did say these were all unsolved. Don't have nightmares. Sleep well. Good night. Good night. If you enjoyed this video or thought it slightly less shit than the others, you can always buy us a cup or on Kofi. And thank you in advance if you do. And remember, everyone who buys a cup from now until the end of March will be put in the prize draw to win a mug. I know. Exciting.